Welcome everyone. Uh, I'm going to be reading uh, The Rat Burger by David Williams. Okay, so let's meet the characters. Uh, first of all, we have Zoe, is a little girl. Then we've got Bert, a burger van man. Uh, next we've got Sheila, she's uh, Zoe's stepmother. We've got Dad, who's a dad. Uh, Tina Trotz, the local bully. Uh, Mr. Grave, the headmaster. A ginger Nut, who's a dead hamster. A Miss Midge, a small teacher. Armitage, a live rat. And Raj, who most of you probably know, the uh, local news agent. Okay, chapter one. Prawn cocktail crisp breath. The hamster was dead. On his back. Legs in the air. Dead. With tears running down her cheeks, Zoe opened the cage. Her hands were shaking, her heart was breaking. As she lay Ginger Nut's little furry body down onto the warm carpet, she thought she would never smile again. Sheila, called Zoe as loudly as she could. Despite her father's repeated pleas, Zoe refused to call her stepmother mum. She never had, and she vowed to herself that she never would. No one could replace Zoe's mum, not even her stepmother, even, not that her stepmother even tried. Shut your face! Oh, I'm watching TV and stuffing myself! Came the woman's gruff voice from the lounge. <laughs> it's Ginger Nut, called Zoe. He's not well. This was an understatement. Zoe had once seen a hospital drama on the telly where a nurse tried to revive a dying old man, so she desperately attempted to give her mouth, a hamster mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation by blowing very gently into his open mouth. And that didn't work. Neither did connecting the rodent's little heart to an AA battery with a paperclip. It was just too late. The hamster was cold to the touch, and he was stiff. Sheila, please help, shouted the little girl. At first, Zoe's tears came silently before she let out a gigantic cry. Finally, she heard her stepmother trudge reluctantly down the hall of the little flat, which was situated high up on the 37th floor of a leaning tower block. The woman made huge effort noises whenever she had to do anything. She was so lazy, she would order Zoe to pick her nose for her, though of course, Zoe always said no. Sheila could even let out a groan while changing channels on the TV remote. Ah, 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 huffed Sheila as she thundered down the hall. Zoe's stepmother was quite short, but she made up for it for being as wide as she was tall. She was, in a word, spherical. Soon Zoe could sense the woman standing in the doorway, blowing out the light from, sorry, blocking out the light from the hall like a lunar eclipse. What's more, Zoe could smell the sickly sweet aroma of prawn cocktail crisps. Her stepmother loved them. In fact, she boasted that when she was a toddler, she had refused to eat anything else and spat any other food back in her mum's face. Zoe thought the crisps stank and not even of prawns. Of course, the woman's breath absolutely reeked of them too. Even now, as she stood in the doorway, Zoe's stepmother was holding a packet of the noxious snag with one hand and feeding her face with the other while she surveyed the scene. As always, she was wearing a long grubby white t-shirt, black leggings and furry pink slippers. The bits of skin that were exposed were covered in tattoos. Her arms bore the names of her ex-husbands, all since crossed out. Oh dear, the woman spat, her mouth full of crisps. Oh dear, oh dear, how very, very sad. It's heartbreaking. The poor little thing has snuffed it. She leaned over her little stepdaughter and peered down at the dead hamster. She sprayed the carpet with half-chewed pieces of crisps as she spoke. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, and all that stuff, she added in a tone that did not sound even remotely sad. Just then, a large piece of half-chewed crisp sprayed from Sheila's mouth onto the poor little fluffy thing's face. It was a mixture of crisps and spit. 
Zoe wiped it away gently as a tear dropped from her eye onto the cold pink nose. Here, oh, I've got a great idea, said Zoe's stepmother. Oh, I just finished these crisps and you can shove the little thing in the bag. Oh, I don't want to touch it myself. I don't want to catch uh, something. Sheila lifted the bag above her mouth and poured the last of the form cocktail crisps crumbles down her greedy throat. The woman then offered her stepdaughter the empty bag. Uh, there you go. Uh, bung it in here, quick, before it stinks the old flat out. Zoe almost gasped at the unfairness of what the woman had just said. It was her fat stepmother's prawn cocktail crisp breath that stank the place out. Her breath could strip paint. It could shear the feathers off a bird and make it bald. If the wind changed direction, you could get a nasty waft of her breath in the town ten miles away. I'm not, boring, boring, uh, I'm not burying my poor ginger nut in a crisp packet, snapped Zoe. I don't know why I called you for in the first place. Please just go. Oh, for goodness sake, girl, shouted the woman. I was only trying to help. Ungrateful little wretch. Well, you're not helping, shouted Zoe, without turning round. Just go away, please. Sheila thundered out of the room and slammed the door so hard that the plaster fell from the ceiling. Zoe listened as the woman she refused to call mum trudged back to the kitchen, no doubt to rip open another family-sized bag of prawn cocktail crisps to fill her face with. The little girl was left alone in a tiny bedroom, cradling her dead hamster. But how had it died? Zoe knew that Ginger Nut was very young, even in hamster years. Could this be a hamster murder? She wondered. But what kind of person would want to murder a defenceless little hamster? Well, before the story is over, you will know. And you will also know that there are people capable of doing much, much worse. The most evil man in the world is lurking somewhere in this very book. Read on, if you dare. <laughs>